Each song is about the dream, the vision to elevate the elders again to a position of respect, of being valued by all of us. And so we have centers here in San Francisco and in the East Bay, in Oakland, and soon to be one in Emeryville. And they all share a common mission, which is to accept people for who they are. If you can't walk, if you can't see, if you can't speak, if you can't hear, or if you don't remember five minutes later, all that doesn't matter. It is in the moment, it is who you are, and that's the most important part. Our programs are a strong way that we uh, try to really address this question of understanding who is this elder in front of us. So the programs all share that common goal of um, creating therapeutic environments, really, where each little action, each little event is something that we can learn from. That's a blossom. I'm sitting on one. A fundamental emphasis that we have here at HSONG is an attitude of being with rather than doing to. Senior care, as we know it, isn't working because it's very much focused on the physical well-being. Not that it's not important, that's very important, but spiritual and emotional parts are many times forgotten. And I think when we think about ourselves, we, can, we know that that's really a 50-50 kind of relationship, if I feel emotionally and spiritually well, most likely my physical well-being is much better as well. So you will find when you walk through our communities that students and caregivers will just sometimes sit with them, not necessarily even in a conversation. There's a powerful relationship that happens in you being quietly next to a person allowing your breathing to uh, mirror each other, allowing just kind of a warm presence to be there. Rather than asking questions or, you know, wanting to have something tangibly happen. And one way that we're trying to do that at Age Song is bring in uh, young students who want to learn how to work with uh, and be with the elders and they have conversations with them on an ongoing basis every week and these students can learn from the elders but the elders also feel still part of this ever-changing society and culture here. I really felt like coming here my mom was coming into a home not into a facility and all the staff from the person at the front desk to the, everyone we met along the way that made us feel really welcome as a family. And, um, and that's what I think you need to make a decision about when you're placing someone there. Are they going to treat your loved one the way you would expect a family member to treat them, not just like another occupant in your facility? So a lot of our training is based on this. Can we walk in an elder's footsteps, so to speak, right? Can we learn more concretely what makes an elder happy? What are the things that really um, give them a joy? It's not just a dream, it's not just an idea, it's not something just on paper, but it's something we live every day at our communities and that we really try to teach and educate people on so it can become something much larger beyond ourselves. It would be wonderful if somehow Ichan can contribute to this idea that there's a true beauty in the face of, a, of an old person that has lived so many years and has weathered so many challenges and uh, something to be proud of, so to speak. Yeah.